Greetings and God bless you in the wonderful name of our living Lord and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, once again, it's time for another edition of As He Leads on the Uptime Network. Uh, my name is Bob Hagen. And uh, today what I'd like to do is uh, get into the Word of God on the subject of being approved of God. And it's, it's a very important thing. I think being approved of God, it's uh, in life, you like to be liked by people. You like to be, you know, have your, when you're in the workplace, you like to have a, um, your work appreciated and approved. Uh, when you're going into a bank to get a loan, you want to have the lo loan approved. You know, you don't want to have it turned down, things like that. And how about being approved of God Almighty? I think it's a pretty important thing. All right, take your Bibles, and uh, we're going to be turning to Hebrews eleven six after we uh, pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. Thank you for the truth of your word, and thank you for the folks that will be watching this, and thank you also for covering for me and my shortcomings, and I can present your word that it will be a blessing to the folks in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, in Hebrews chapter 11, and we're going to go to verse 6. Now, this is uh, <clears throat> something that's it was shown to me one of the first fellowships that I ever went to way back in the day when I was uh, following the teachings of the, the Buddhism. And uh, this gentleman showed this to me, and he said, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay, so I, <clears throat> it says, but without faith. All right, I didn't have faith in those days. I um, didn't have faith. I, I believed in Jesus Christ, and I believed in God, but I did not have faith. And I didn't know that he was a rewarder of them, that diligently seek him. The word diligently uh, shows effort, an earnest effort that's involved. Uh, it's not something where we just claim to be Christians and then we never do anything. And another thing about this verse that's very important is how would you in your life like to please him? After everything that he has done, he sent his only begotten son into the world to live a life, to carry out his mission, to be crucified, to go into the grave three days and three nights, and then be raised by the power of God and seated at the right hand of the father where he makes intercession for us. I think that that's a pretty wonderful Lord to be serving. And I do the best of my ability to try to please him. But when you come to God, you must believe that he is in the reward of them that diligently seek him. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. And I'm going to show you a verse here that, that <laughs> when I first... When I first read this verse many years ago, I thought to myself, oh, no, I'm in trouble now because the first word was study. And that's one of the things I really never was a big fan of uh, going through school was studying. But the word of God says, study to show thyself approved unto man. No, you say study to show thyself approved unto the government. That's for sure. No. Or uh, unto your neighbor. No. Unto God, a workman, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, the word rightly dividing there is a right cutting. There, um, you know, you, you go to a butcher and you want them to cut, you know, you want them to give you that cut of meat that's right. You don't want them to, to mess it up. You don't want it all jagged. You want it, to, you want it straight. You want it done correctly. But this is rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay. And you might be asking yourself, well, how do I know that the word of God is the word of truth? 
And I'm glad you asked that question because we're going to go to Second Peter chapter 1. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from the Father honor and glory when there came a, such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. And here, these two verses here, and a lot of people would want these taken out of the Bible, but they're in here. Knowing this first, not knowing this last, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's go back to, let's go back down to, or up to verse 16 for a moment here. And um, this is what was talked about in the time of Jesus and after he is gone, after he ascended to the Father. Uh, many people, you know, as the apostles went out and started sharing the word in the book of Acts and the word started to move. They were saying, well, these men are making these things up. And so uh, the Holy Spirit working through Peter had Peter write this. We have not followed cunningly devised fables. Okay. We have not made this up. This is not a storybook. It wasn't written as a storybook then, and it's not a storybook now, folks. When we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. They were with him. They were eyewitnesses of his majesty. You see, they saw him, they saw his life, they saw what he did, they saw his ministry, they saw how he dealt with people, they saw how he fed the 5,000, how he healed a man who was born blind. You know, uh, countless numbers of healings his compassion for people when when he was in need of you know he wanted to be away and have some time so he could pray to the father now he still had compassion on the people this is this is the thing that's so amazing about the lord jesus christ and over all these years he hasn't changed he hasn't gotten any weaker you know, the, the the majesty that he portrayed is still available today. You know, being approved, excuse me, being approved of God is, is an important thing, but it's not um, to where we're not going to make mistakes. It says that, it says in the word that we're, um, we're blameless before him in love. In Ephesians, it says that, but it never says we're faultless. It doesn't say that that uh, Bob Hagen teaching today is going to be faultless, or any of the other folks that are on up time. You know, we all we all fall short of the glory of God. That's why we need the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how, that's why we need Him every day. We just don't need Him a few minutes a week. We need Him all 168 hours in the week. A lot of times we don't acknowledge that, but we really do. Um, I think that knowing that the word of God is of no private interpretation, then there must be a way that we can learn. And I believe I've been taught over the years that it interprets itself in the verse, uh, in the context, or in its prior usage. So you look at the context of the scriptures, in which a lot of times people pull them out of context. You look at the verse itself or you look at prior usage, it might have been used in the Old Testament, it might have been used in the Gospels, but look back at the usage in the throughout the whole Word of God, and it gives you an idea how it works. Okay, now we're going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. J. Vernon McGee used to come on and say we're going to, we're going to be traveling on the Bible bus today. I guess. Through the Bible with Jay, I, I, I love Jay Vernon McGee. I don't know why I brought him up. He just, it was a man that I used to listen to when I was a kid. And 
And uh, for some reason, I'd listen to him because I always liked the sound of his voice. And I, I think it, it must have resonated to some, some part of the hunger that I had for the word when I was a young man. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 3. You want to, you're asking um, how, how is the scripture given and why is it given? It's a good question. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's God breathed. It's the word inspiration of God is theopneustos. It's giving a human attribute to God. It's like God breathed, you know, God spoke this word. And it's profitable for doctrine, which is right believing. Uh, it's instruction from the master is what a, uh, a good definition of doctrine would be. Instruction from the master for reproof which is when you're when you've fallen short and for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god may be perfect okay the word here says thoroughly furnished unto all good works uh clothed you know you're you have everything that you need it's really important as you walk in through this life as a believer that you're you're fully equipped you know you have uh all the armor all the things that you need we have we believe once we become born again once we made jesus lord and believe god raised him from the dead and we we put off concerning the things that are dealing with our old man nature that we have a new nature and each day it is renewed as we put off the old man and, and renew our minds, um, we become more Christ-like. But it says that the man of God may be perfect. We're not, we don't have the perfection right now that we're going to have in the future. But the Christ within us is what is perfect. You know, God doesn't give bad gifts. You know, he when he gave you the Holy Spirit, you have the Holy Spirit in your life. He didn't give it with any flaws. You know, he gave it to you uh, for you to be your best with the type of personality that you have. It's like we have, you know, God looks at us and he sees the Christ in us. You know, he looks at Bob Hagen and sees this Christ in Bob Hagen, even though he's got a bunch of shortcomings and you know, he struggles with this and that. That's still my boy down there. That's still my son. And that's, that's, and you ladies out there, that's still my daughter right there. And she's very important to me. And it's just, it's, it's just a wonderful thing. So now we're going to, let's move on over to Romans chapter eight. And we're going to go through Romans for a little bit of time here. Um, I want to show you some things. Because a lot of people deal with with um, what I call self-judgment, which is uh, this this whole chapter is talking about spiritual things in Romans chapter 8. Uh, as Paul was moved by the Holy Spirit, he wrote this. There is therefore now no condemnation. The word condemnation is katakrina, which means self-judgment. Okay, There's now no self-judgment. To them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life, or the law of spiritual life, in Christ Jesus, hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, okay? For they that are after this flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit do things of the spirit. This verse right here, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Okay, why is that? Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then the, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Okay, before we go on to the next section of the verses here in chapter 8, so they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Okay, then there's, here's a question for you. Then how are we ever going to be able to please God? Well, 
what we need to do is you need to get born again in the spirit of God. You need to, uh, as I said earlier, uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved, um, made whole. Okay. Uh, I want to move down a little bit in uh, Romans chapter 8. Let's just keep reading for a little bit here. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Okay. Now we're, we're still, the old man nature is going to still be with us. I can try to explain this and try to get it to where it's really vivid. The old man nature is still with us. It's not, it's not automatically gone when you're born again. That would have been great. The day that I got born again, if I didn't have to deal with any of the old man nature, or any of the, the sin in my flesh or anything like that would have been wonderful. But it's still there. Um, verse 11, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, just think about that verse. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken or make alive your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now this verse right here was another one that was shown early on. They that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Okay. Hmm. How can you be led by the Spirit of God? You have to, first of all, you have to have the Holy Spirit within you. How are you led by the Spirit of God? Prayer? Uh, by putting on the Word of God and endeavoring to live your life according to the precepts of the Word of God? Um, uh, getting, you know, there's times when people need to be prayed for. Um, it talks about in, in 1 Corinthians uh, 12, 13, and 14, it talks about the uh, spiritual matters, uh, spiritual gifts, if you will. And there may be people that don't believe they're still in operation in today's day and time. I do believe they are still in operation just from the truth that somebody can hear the word of God and get born again is a miracle. You're taking somebody from death unto life. Uh, and I said in one teaching a while back, you are actually raising somebody from the dead when you, you know, I'm not trying to be any, I'm not trying to, to uh, whitewash any of the, uh, you know, works of Jesus Christ or, you know, people being raised from the dead in, in our day and time, but you're taking somebody who's dead in trespasses and sins and, and bringing them uh, back to life. And um, it also says, and as we go, as we continue to read on farther in Romans chapter eight, and uh, we're heirs, heirs of God, and uh, joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Uh, it's a an amazing thing because the Word of God says that uh, when you're born again of God's Spirit, that you're an heir of God. And uh, if I was an heir to a fortune from, uh, let's say, my my dad was a man that, that owned a newspaper, a huge newspaper, and he was a multimillionaire, and I was an heir to that, and, you know, he put it in his will that I would get all that when, when he was gone. I'm an heir to that, a joint heir. But it says we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. And we've received this, this great gift. We've, we've been given by, by the grace of God, God's redemption, Christ's expense, if you will. We've been given life. We've been taken from... You know, at one point we were dead in trespasses and sins. In fact, let's go to Ephesians chapter two for a moment here. And we're gonna we're gonna read part of chapter two. Uh, I think this is kind of important because a lot of people want you know they'll say, well, there's no real reason to 
believe God's word, and I, I beg to differ on this one. Ephesians chapter 2, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. See, it says we were dead in trespasses and sins. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, or as I like to say, the prince of the power of hot air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. We were born as children of wrath, not as children of disobedience. There's a difference. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love were with, he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Just think about that. That in the ages to come, it's going to take ages to come for him to show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through works. No, it doesn't say through works. It says, for by grace are ye saved through faith. Remember we started off talking about it's impossible without having faith to please him. And not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Wow, something else. Not of works, Bob, should, lest any man should boast. Okay, verse 10, for we are his workmanship. The word workmanship is poema, and that means handiwork or masterpiece. Did you know that you're a masterpiece? As you're watching this and you're reading and you're reading along with me, you are, a, you are God's masterpiece. An artist would only usually have one masterpiece. But it says here, for we are his masterpieces, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Here we go. I can prove that we were aliens here. <laughs> that at that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who are sometimes afar off are made nigh by what? By belief in Buddha, by belief in Allah, by belief in the five to 6,000 Hindu gods? No, we're made nigh by the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ that he shed at Calvary. The broken body that shed blood. For he is our peace. Who's our peace? Christ, who hath made both one, Jew and Gentile one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, or to make in himself of twain one new man making peace, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth into an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye are also built together for habitation of God through the Spirit. I, I don't want to really take the time to break the entire chapter down, but that chapter right there is absolute dynamite. There is gold in every single word in that chapter, like there is in the Word of God. We are made nigh by the blood of Christ. There's no more separation there's peace we needed peace we did not have peace we were at enmity with god we we no longer are at enmity with god we don't have we can go right directly to the father and use the name of jesus christ because it says in the word of god that he is at the right hand making intercession for us our prayers are not 
going out and dropping to the ground and not being answered. You know, a lot of times a prayer may not be answered in the way we would like to see it answered. Maybe it's not going to be answered right now. Maybe it'll be answered in the future. I know that I'm always praying for people to come to knowledge of the truth. I know that when we come on, we do the program on Tuesday nights. It's, it's our goal to present the word of God, to show people there is an alternative to what the world is teaching. There is a absolute truth out there. Jesus Christ said, and let, let's go to John chapter 14, the gospel of John chapter 14, verse six. I'm going to show you how he said he was the way, the truth, and the life. But I'm not making these things up as I go along. You know, I didn't write a bunch of notes down and just make up a bunch of verses. But in John chapter 14, Gospel of John chapter 14, in verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, he's speaking to Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, as I've said before, either Jesus Christ told the truth or he lied. And we believe that he told the truth. And um, let's let's go down let's go down a little farther in this same chapter. Let's continue on in, in verse seven. Uh, if he had known me, you would have known you should have known my father also, and from thenceforth you know him and seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and suffices us. Jesus saith unto him, I, Have I not been so long with you, and yet have have you not known me, Philip? He that has seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, that fellowship? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or, little, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whosoever, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. See? It's a, and, and this is the reason that we do this, is that God will get the glory. It's um, the person who's teaching the Word of God, uh, whether it's myself or Pastor Patrick or... Uh, Bob Barber, or Kevin, or John Boucher, or Greg. Uh, the reason we're doing this is that God will get the glory. Uh, it says the heaven, the angels in heaven rejoice at the saving of one sinner. I think that this is really uh, what our goal is. Uh, you know, it's been this way all along. It is to bring people back to a knowledge of the truth. And, uh, why don't we go ahead and go to Psalm 119. We're going to look at a few verses there, and then we're going to wrap this up, because I really think that our goal uh, as believers is to stand approved before God and not feel like we're always bums and crumbs. You know, and We're going to make mistakes. It's just the way life is. We, you can't. You know, you can't get up in the morning and say, well, I'm going to, this is going to be a perfect day and nothing's going to go wrong. But I can tell you about some of the days I have at work and they're just, <sighs> but you know what? Life goes on and, and they say that God can make lemonade out of lemons. And that's, that's the truth. And many times that happens. Um, Psalm 119 verse 129. Now, if you know the word of God, you know that there's there's a psalm. This is actually a psalm which is called an acrostic psalm. And the reason it's an acrostic psalm is because every verse within this Psalm 119 mentions the word of God. Right here it says, thy testimonies are wonderful. Therefore doth my soul keep them. The entrance of thy words giveth light, it gives understanding unto the simple. I opened my mouth and panted, for I long for thy commandments. 
look thou upon me and be merciful upon me as thou usest to do unto those that love thy name. Here we go. And this is the verse. This is the verse here that I really want to uh, finish up the teaching with this morning. Order my steps in thy word and let not iniquity have dominion over me. Okay. Now, this is something you could pray. You could say, Father, today I'm facing a lot of difficult things that I'm going to be going through. I need for you to order my steps in thy word and let, let not iniquity have dominion over me. Um, there's a lot of iniquity in the world. There's a lot of things out there that are set up to trip us up. And, and when you're saying, you know, Lord, your testimonies are wonderful and, and, I, and I love your testimonies and they give light. When you're at, thanking the Father for ordering your steps in thy word, it's not like he's going to force you to do it against your will. It's something that you're, the more of the word of God, you know, the more you're going to want to have him order your steps in the word because it's a blessing. We talked about this recently. A lot of stuff is not easy. Um, our brother Bob Barber went through a tr tremendous amount of challenges last year, in the year, last year and a half. But he came out the other side a lot stronger. He was, you know, it was tough. I know he was leaning on the Lord, and the Lord made him stronger. I mean, we all we've all gone through some things. It's that's uh, these things make us stronger. And, but we have to realize that we need, we need the Father, we need the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. And it's not, this is not because we're weak. We're, we're, to, we're to take his yoke upon us and his burden. His yoke, be yoked together with the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're going to have burdens. You're going to have burdens in life for people. You know, I've, I've, I've got a burden right now for my younger son that you wouldn't even believe. But I've given it to the Lord. I say, Lord, I, you know how I feel about this. I'm giving this to you because I can't handle it. But I want you to order my steps in your word so that I can be in fellowship. That's, that's the, such an important thing, being in fellowship. Um, you know, it's sharing fully. It's something that that we we really endeavor to do. And I really am praying that this little bit of word that I share with you today has been a blessing. Um, I know we read a lot of sections there, but I really believe that uh, chapter two of Ephesians was really important for somebody out there to hear because maybe they have heard a lot of people have been telling them they need to get right with God, but they have no idea why. And you read through that section and you read through Romans and go back and look through the Gospels and get acquainted with the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, give him a chance. I I've, I've say this usually and every time when I'm, I'm not in uptime. Give Jesus Christ a chance. You know, just say, look, you know, I need you. Um, like uh, the late Jack Van Impe used to say, we all need him. And uh, I think that you know, somebody who was in the word as long as he had been, he passed away now, but he was constantly saying that. He would always say that I'm learning more every day. And he, he, the guy knew the word, that's for sure. But he was learning every day. And he, I'm sure he prayed, order my steps and thy word, Father. You know, I need, I need more of you. And uh, I just thank you for uh, taking the time today to listen to uh, approved of God. Um, I'm believing this would be a blessing to you. And if there's uh, anything I can do for you, uh, you can always email me at HaganRW52 at yahoo.com. If you <laughs> like the teaching, uh, if you didn't like the teaching, uh, if, you know, whatever, I, I'd like to hear from you. And, uh, I want to pray and uh, thank the Father for this time. Lord, thank you for being able to get on here. Uh, thankful for Greg making the time to help me with this. And thank you, Lord, for being able to reach out and touch people's lives as only you can.
via the Spirit. Thank you for the rest of this day and the rest of this time. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you.